September 16, 2022 was a regular day in Slack for Uber staff. Team members were chatting about their schedules for the week and the latest updates on their projects. Ideally, a couple of channels were filled with the usual banter and idle conversation, while others were quiet, waiting for someone to break the silence. Safe to say, nothing seemed out of place. Not even a new user who had joined the company's channel. This user used the name Nwave without a profile picture, biography, or job description. But no one thought much of this. None of the staff had a reason to. Workers modify profiles all the time. Then, something else happened. The newcomer announced they had hacked into Uber's data, according to screenshots posted on social media. A deluge of emojis followed the announcement. Satirical sirens, laid-back popcorns, mocking faces, and light-hearted alarms. The message's brazenness to the staff looked like a TikTok prank. They thought it was a joke and made gifts to meme the situation. Some even started interacting with the hacker. At that point, no one knew the extent of the hack and that an 18-year-old intruder who had been learning cybersecurity used Uber as a practice ground. More significantly, the staff didn't know such news would make its way to the front pages of the New York Times, prompting several security alerts from partners and reactions from the cybersecurity industry. First off, how did the Uber breach happen? Let's begin by dissecting the announcement. According to a series of tweets from security engineer Yuga Labs and VX Underground, the hacker used social engineering plus MFA fatigue. Social engineering uses human interaction and manipulation to gain access to computer systems. Social engineers use deception, influence, and persuasion to trick people into giving up confidential information, performing actions, or installing software that compromises security. They often pose as members of the target organization or company, or they may pose as someone else entirely, for example, a law enforcement officer. MFA fatigue refers to users getting bored with multi-factor authentication, MFA, and choosing not to comply with it eventually. It happens for several reasons, but the most common one is that users find MFA MFA too inconvenient or annoying. In Uber's case, it happened this way. The hacker used several social engineering techniques to compromise an Uber employee's, probably employee's, account. The attacker sent repeated notifications about the need for MFA from their account. This led to MFA fatigue in the employee, who ultimately gave up compliance. The attacker then sent a WhatsApp message pretending to be a member of Uber IT, asking for login approval. The employee complied and gave them access to their Slack account. From Slack, the attacker proceeded to access network resources, targeting PowerShell scripts. One of the scripts contained hard-coded credentials for an administrator account, which allowed the attacker to gain access to multiple other systems. What lessons can be learned from the Uber breach? 1. Attackers have the edge. Jai Dargan, chief of staff at Axio, reminded us again that attacks are inevitable. Even though we don't know who is behind this attack, it's safe to assume they're well-funded and highly motivated. To highlight the impact, the World Economic Forum Insight Report placed cyber attacks and data fraud as third in the most worrisome outlook for companies. 2. MFA isn't sufficient. Multifactorial authentication, MFA, has been the standard for years. However, it's no longer reliable given all the ways attackers can bypass it. CyberArk carried out an analysis and found at least four ways they could circumvent MFA or diminish its benefits. The result points to the fact that MFA only isn't sufficient. 3. Human links are weak. The Uber breach serves as a reminder that humans are some of the weakest links in any security system. A strong password and two-factor authentication aren't enough when someone can call your cell phone company and pose as you. Former NSA Director Admiral Michael S. Rogers believes the solution is to increase user security awareness. Here are proposed ways to achieve that. So what happened with this hacker? The British police have arrested the alleged hacker behind the Uber breach, whose name has been revealed to be Teapot. The young man is said to have been around 17 years old and is not 18 as previously believed. According to a tweet by the City of London Police, he was arrested in Oxfordshire alongside seven other teenagers. The hacker used Breachbase and White as his online aliases. Reports say that he had made around $14 million from cybercrimes. 